This is a Just Barbarian Things actual play podcast. Consider this your only warning. Our games may contain themes and language not suitable for all listeners. All right, this is our second adventure in Call of Cthulhu. And so we're carrying on with the same character that you had from before. Carl Loft. With your little upgrades that you have from the last yes. adventure. Yes, little being the operative word there. You know, you, you didn't you didn't roll shitty when it counted. <laughs> you said it was a good size. <laughs> it doesn't even apply to that statement. Oh, that's why it's funny. All right, so... When last we left your character, Carl, he had been invited to the Miskatonic University to lecture about some of the occult goings-on that he experienced at the house. And this is deep in the mountains somewhere, Isn't it like in Transylvania or something like that. Or No, it's in the same state that you're in. It's like in upstate New York or no. Massachusetts. Upsta upstate Massachusetts. It's in the, the hills of... I thought it was like in a mountainous region. It's... No. But it is kind of convoluted to get to. It's not a very direct route. And so you find that even though you're not leaving the state, um, that the route you need to take requires you to make a stop overnight somewhere before you finish your journey. Okay. So you will be stopping in the small town of Bennington. Small town. Population 327. <laughs> um, it's a town that's in an area known for having kind of um, woods and lots of small lakes and things like that. Um, so much more common a place to go to if you are um, someone who like hunts during the hunting season or something like that, but not a place that you would normally visit otherwise. Where am I going again? Miskatonic University? Correct. Okay. That is in Arkham. Oh, very nice. Miskatonic. You. So there's actually a place named Arkham? No, that's the made-up Call of Cthulhu city that everything happens in. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I guess that makes sense. And it's in Massachusetts. Cool. So the way that you decide to make your drive, um, it doesn't actually take too long to get to Bennington. So mm -hmm. it gives you plenty of time to like pack and get your things together to make the drive up to Bennington, stay in a small hotel overnight, and then probably leave sometime midday the next day. So you'd have some time to look around town and things like that. To look around Bennington? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll check out Main Street Bennington. So when you get into town, your first part of your trip goes without issue. Um, you check into your small hotel. It's actually pretty nice, but definitely quite rustic. Like it caters to outdoorsmen and things like that. It's kind of a hunting lodge type of feel. Right. Okay. And kind of like the hotel in Frisco that we've stayed in before, that kind of like mountain town, like rustic feel. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Um, and when you get up in the morning to grab a cup of coffee and whatever your normal kind of morning routine is. Our normal 1924 breakfast is. And for your character specifically, who knows? I don't know like, what his habits are. Barley and, <laughs> and toasted mill oats. I don't even know. Probably bacon and bacon. eggs. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and yeah. toast like a normal human. <laughs> bacon, eggs, toast. Uh, a newspaper, oatmeal. a cigar. Ba basically Deadwood uh, uh, breakfast. Whiskey. <laughs> yeah, whiskey. <laughs> so you head downstairs uh, to start to ask around for a place to go for breakfast. And you notice that the town of Bennington is a buzz. Ooh. You hear people talking, um, not whispering or anything, like talking with each other. There are large groups kind of gathered, even in the hotel, lobby hotel, mm. lobby of the hotel. Um, mm. And they're talking about a gunfight that happened last night on the edge of the forest. Cool. 
rather than ask like one of the townsfolk directly, I'd like to uh, listen, like just see if I can eavesdrop on the, the gossip. All right, make a listen check. And catch up on the gossip. All right, I got a 43. Uh, so that's a normal success. All right, check your box. All right, you hear talk of police cars, sirens, shotgun blasts, escaped kidnappers. The locals are saying that three gangsters were killed and two police officers were shot. Some are saying that they were wounded and others are interjecting to say that no, they had died. The gangsters or the police? Uh, the two police officers who were shot. And three was... gangsters were killed and two police officers were shot. That was near the edge of the forest? Correct. And as you overhear this information, I want you to go ahead and make a spot hidden roll. Okay. Hang on one second. Sure. And the two gangsters dead? There are three gangsters that were killed and two police officers that were shot. And you're hearing various things about whether the police officers are dead or not. Okay. Three cops shot. Two cops, three what gangsters. I could have swore you just now because I wrote down three first and you said two. Oh, man. Okay. Sorry. I think you got it right and I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> Two cops, three gangsters. Dead question mark. Okay, so you have to take extensive notes in this game to, to keep on top of stuff. Spot hidden, you said? Yes. Okay, that's a 51. Not going to get there. Okay. So there's all this excitement and talking. Um, and what would you like to do? Um. Uh, Let's see. I think I need to gather some more information about this to see if I can find out where the edge of the forest is. So um, I'm going to try in a roundabout way, talk to what passes for a concierge in this hunting lodge. If mm -hmm. there's, you know, um, old man Jenkins who runs the place, right. or maybe the cook Richardson, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, there's a person at the front desk in the lobby. Right. So uh, kind of chatting with some of the locals who've gathered in the lobby area. Yeah, I'd like to uh insinuate myself into uh his conversational um radius, so to speak. Sure. And ask him um well basically just as a, a guest, you know, I'll start with some small talk. Um to uh what what did you say his name was? I didn't. What would you like his name to be? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, I don't care. <laughs> we'll call him, um, we'll, we'll call him Dick Mathis. Okay. And I would have known that because he's the proprietor of this yeah, fine He's the one who checked you in the night before. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. I'll sidle up to Dick and waiting for an appropriate break in the conversation because um, I got the social skills. Right. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, uh, oh, good morning, Dick. Uh, quite the commotion this morning, yes? Yeah. Have you, I mean, I'm sure you've heard a little bit just coming down the stairs, but apparently there was a shootout with some kidnappers last night. You don't say. Was anyone hurt? Well, some of the gangsters got it good. Some of them got away, and apparently two of our local police were, were shot. Escaped, you say? Wow. Doesn't that beat all? Well, um, whereabouts did this take place, have you heard? Well, they said it was at the entrance to the forest, uh, but I think, yeah, I think they're putting up some posters outside. I heard the sheriff was calling a meeting this morning. Indeed. Well, hmm. Splendid. Where might a bloke have some breakfast, would you say, in this lovely town of yours? Hmm. I'd definitely say at this hour you have a couple of options. There is a cafe. It's connected to the bookstore. There's also a, a little bit more of a, a raucous location, if you will, and they're usually open in the morning as well. Hmm. Splendid. Where are these uh, fine establishments located? So he gives you directions to each of them. Uh, one of them's kind of right in the middle of the uh, the main strip of town, main street, if you will. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, The other is kind of at the end of Main Street, not quite on Main Street proper. Okay. Hmm. Proprietor. All right. Okay. Uh, I'll head outside and see if I can't spot a poster. All right. So you see um, a uniformed police officer walking away from a freshly adhered poster to a wall nearby. Yeah, like where they put it up and just brush the glue over the whole thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it is calling all able-bodied folk Mm -hmm. in the town to meet at the police station. The sheriff is organizing a manhunt to find Lucas Strong's missing daughter and the escaped gangsters. I see. Okay. Uh, Who's Lucas Strong? So you do see some townsfolk kind of coming to gather around the poster just as you are. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, Lucas Strong's daughter. Well, I mean, he owns everything in this town. No wonder they'd try to take her. She'd probably fetch a pretty ransom. And then someone else says, I hear he's offering a $5,000 reward for anyone who can find her. Hmm. My internal monologue goes, hmm. So, uh, I'm going to actually head to the uh, raucous area, um, uh, the raucous, the juke joint that serves breakfast because it hasn't closed yet. Or right, because it doesn't close, basically. Yeah. Um, to get my, uh, you know, slice of ham steak and whatever else. Right, yeah, you're country ham in this part of the world or whatever virginia ham that you would get Mm -hmm. so walking into the location you can see that it's not very crowded you definitely see people who've probably been here most of the night and are now having their kind of hair of the dog recovery meal yeah breakfast after you party man that's the way to go so there are Women in kind of short shift dresses, what we would think of as flapper dresses nowadays. Oh um, and there are men in, you know, kind of loose suits and things like that. Ties have definitely been taken off or loosened. Shirts are half open, things like that. Is there a poker game that's still going? There are signs of poker games that were happening when some people like have a head down at that table like obviously sleeping off whatever okay. they're doing the night before uh, so it's it's not your your high octane joint no nah. okay um and there's music playing that you can you know when you walk in um and you can see that the people that are up are already drinking what appears to be <gasps> hard liquor <laughs> well that's against the law <laughs> Uh, okay. I think that, uh, I'll walk up to the bar if possible. I'd like to walk to the bar and lean against it with an elbow and catch the barkeep's eye and, uh, point in front of me. Coffee, please. Right away. And so he kind of goes back where he already has a pot that's brewed because people are having a little bit of, you know, some Irish style of coffee mm. this morning. And he says, uh, you want that straight up or anything in there? Uh, black, please. Actually, if you've got milk. We do. Splendid. Take a dollop of milk. And so he brings you a steaming cup of coffee with a splash of milk in it. So I'm used to having my tea with milk. But I don't want to order tea because I don't want to stand out. (laughs) So, the bartender is, uh, while he's pouring, like, does he pour it and everything over there and bring it over to me? Yes. Does he bring all the stuff and then, okay. Yeah. So when he puts it down, I'd like to, uh, to casually mention quite the goings on in town this morning, eh? Yeah, those that are up, it's all they can talk about. Have you seen any fellas uh, headed over that way? Uh, it sounds like the briefing at the police station's at 10, so folks are definitely getting their act together to head that way. Rumor hmm. has it there's quite the reward uh, for those that are successful in helping out. 
I do have a pocket watch. Fantastic. I uh, I'd like to pull out my pocket watch and flick it open click, and look at the current time. It's just about nine o'clock. Oh, excellent. Get plenty of time for breakfast. Just snap it shut and put it back in its little watch pocket on my vest. And uh, say, friend, you serve breakfast here as well. You have, uh, you know, the standards. Splendid. I'll have one standard, please. He kind of, like, gives you a little chuckle. <laughs> um, and uh, he kind of calls through a little window to the back, and he's like, All right, Jer, it's uh, it's going to be one slice with with one sunny. And you hear a, an, an affirmative from the back. And toast with butter. Can do. <laughs> And he adds that to your order. Fantastic. Okay, now I need to take the uh, take in the local color, if you will. Sure. And see who we have here. Size up who might be heading in, who might be talking about the goings on. Because sure. that's a pretty. The rumor of five five uh, large yeah. for a reward is got to be. That's a lot of money right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Especially in a small town like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, there's got to be some buzz. So, I'm trying to pick up on the buzz. So, you notice as you kind of sit down and are waiting for your food, a few more people drift in as well. So, it's not just the people who have been here all night. You're also seeing some people who are coming in kind of like you to grab some food and some chatter before they head to the police station. And so, it starts really to kind of pick up and get a little louder. And uh, you keep your ear out, so go ahead and make a listen check to see how much you pick up. All right. Um, so my tens place was a 40, mm -hmm. and my ones place was a zero, so that's just a 40, right? That is correct. Okay. Dang it. So close, but just a normal success. All right. So still a success, right? Yes. So that's fine. Um, I mean, no one's really whispering. Everyone's talking because this is all exciting public news. Yeah. So you are able to catch a couple things with your normal success. Um, one is that someone mentions that the shootout that occurred was at a ransom handoff gone wrong uh -huh. for Lucas Strong's daughter. I see. You hear someone mention that the remaining gangsters got away with the ransom money and the girl. Okay. And they ran back into the forest. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Someone mentions that beyond the reward that everyone's talking about, they also heard that anyone who helps with the search gets a per diem for every... for. Helping out, basically. So anyone who goes gets paid. Oh, wow. Fled into woods. Okay. I'm thinking that they're holed up in a cabin in the woods. And so if I can um, get, get the help of a local who is familiar with the local, you know, cabins in the woods and woods, etc. Mm -hmm. that that'll give me an, an edge, a leg up, and uh, maybe I can rescue this girl and collect the sweet reward money. All right. I think, you know, that's a very fair line of thought for that. So who among the patrons here looks like they uh they might you know know their way around the woods you do notice a couple of people that came into breakfast a little bit later um are they have a look to you more of an outdoorsy type um they're a little bit broader of build um their clothes are a little bit more canvas and flannel mm -hmm. um and so and they're definitely they seem like a posse, like people who are going to be going together to be part of the search. Okay. 
school, are they going to order breakfast or order anything? They have ordered breakfast. They already did. Mm -hmm. I missed it. Poop. Okay. I wanted to be all suave and debonair and when they're like, we'll order blah stuff and things. And I'd be like, put that on my tab. And well, you could certainly strike up a do that if you want to do that. That's what I had in mind, sure. but if it's too late. No, that would be fine. We can definitely fit that in there. Okay. So kind of they're talking and the proprietor of the establishment comes over, asks for their orders. Um, one of them orders double ham. Double ham. One of them orders an extra couple of eggs with his. Delicious. And uh, and both of them order coffee. One of them orders it with a splash of the gold stuff. <laughs> Delicious as well. Breakfast of champions. So after he takes their order, right. that's when I'll, I'll jump in. Um, put that on my tab, Bakheep, as I walk up to their table i'm guessing yeah okay. it's a table all right and so the uh proprietor nods at you and you get kind of a, a raised eyebrow from the table so what social skill would you like to roll with a bonus die to kind of wiggle your way friendly style into this group the one that i am best at <laughs> um which which is um, hmm let's see there's charm which I'm not good at right there's fast talk fast talk which there's I'm even worse at persuade and persuade which I am middle terrible at so I think it's gonna have to be charm and I'm just gonna have to try and roll really really so you get a bonus die really well which means you're gonna roll two tens places and you're gonna take the better result okay along with your ones place obviously so I have to beat a 15 so this is gonna be a tall order GL GL thank you without further ado here we go Oh, so close. So the better result was a 32, but I had to beat a 15. Mm. So you can see from the look on his face uh, that the guy who seems to be doing most of the talking in the group looks at you a little suspiciously. He's suspicious. I don't blame him for being suspicious. Right. Uh, can, I, can we help you, friend? Uh, yes, good morning, gentlemen. I've noticed that perhaps uh, you uh, you folks are local to the area, and I'm Yeah, myself... and we can tell you're a fucking red coat. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, am, am from far and away, so uh, is it that obvious? <laughs> anyway, I was uh, hoping to wheedle my way into a guide to the local area, um, to do some sightseeing, perhaps uh, local cabins where, uh, I don't know, and maybe certain ruffians might hide out. If I could find my way there, I'm sure I could be of some use. Well, uh, we've got our crew quite, quite well put together. Um, why don't you make a persuade check to see how, how well you do with this? Uh, okay. Using your, your skills that you're so good at right now. Now we're talking. I'm going to persuade their butts off. I have to beat a 10. <laughs> <laughs> so this isn't going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> it did not? I rolled a 91. Oh, yeah. Super I rolled did the not. like exact opposite of what I needed to roll. <laughs> <laughs> Says, well, we, we've got our crew well put together. Um, we're not looking to add another, especially with the reward I'm sure you've heard about. Not looking to split that another way. Indeed. Um, How are you fixed with firearms? We're, we're and those who can handle them. We're well versed in in hunting. Relatively large game out here. And the most dangerous game of all, gentlemen, the game we'll be hunting. Are you well versed in that? 
I guess I'm kind of not role playing my shitty persuade role, am I? <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, dirt, dirt you're, potato, you're trying to never do a mind. new thing. <laughs> no, because oh, yeah, I'm you... trying to steer it in the role of like, look, I can be useful. Let me right. demonstrate that is what I'm trying to do. But yeah, I, you know. Um, how are you doing that exactly? What skill do you think you're using to try to <sighs> convince them? Um, are you using your knowledge of firearms to use lingo or something? Are you, what are you doing? Well, let's see here. Um, so, yeah, there isn't really like a, hmm. nope, nope, hmm. nah. No, I, I just, like I said, I was just trying to steer it towards a, a direction that I could demonstrate, you know, that I'm a, I'm a crack shot and good at, you know, shooting uh, perhaps people, not like deer and stuff like that. So um, it would be more useful in a firefight with gangsters, you know, so right. that that's what I'm trying to communicate to right. them. Right. But... I don't know that I have a skill that necessarily reflects that, you know, that, that I could speak to that, you know, that's why I was trying to like steer it in a way to like, let me, sh let me show you my skills. Like we can, you know, throw a bottle in the air or something like that. And I can right. Try well, why don't you roll firearms, your, your pistol skill, your handgun skill. Yes. And so that you can talk about it in a way that is very self-assured. Okay. That makes sense. Let me give that a shot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this time I roll like amazingly. I, I roll a 13, which is below my amazing super duper lower number success. All right. So you um, you can check that box because you're successful. Checked. And the guy kind of like, he gives you an approving nod and he says, I see what you're getting at, friend. But uh, like I said, we're pretty set with our crew here. But I will tell you this. If you're looking for a cabin, what someone could hole up in, there is a, uh, besides, you know, for the most part, hunting happens at the edge of the forest. There's actually not a lot of game in the deep woods. And a lot of people have different rumors about why that's the case. But, uh, there is a cabin I've heard tell of. It's uh, said that it was used by deserters from the Civil War. I could, I could give you some information about where that's supposedly located. Any information of that sort would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, so he uh, is able to give you kind of an idea of distance and some landmarks um, for the direction of that storied cabin okay i'm gonna call this the lost cabin just for ease of use in my notes sure directions to lost cabin okay it says yep yeah, there's a there's definitely some history of deserters some specific ones that uh ran up north this way to hide out in the wilderness well, blast their coward souls. And with that, I'd like to head to the bartender to settle up my tab, bidding these gentlemen a uh, fond farewell, good morning, and enjoy your breakfast. And make sure to, you know, pay for it, because I don't want to be branded, uh, you know, shiftless, no account. Right. <laughs> Let me pull up some prices, because I didn't have my books open yet. That's my fault. Yeah, because I, I just got paid from my last job, so I should be flush with cash. I All should right. have at least 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, for paying for three meals mm -hmm. with drinks... Mm -hmm. um, you can get out, including a decent tip for about two dollars. Nice. Okay. Fantastic. Well, I'll put, you know, I'll I'll pay the barkeep or whoever, 
and be on my way. At least I think so. Yeah. No. I don't know. It's like, thanks for the tip, friend. Uh, good luck if you're joining up the manhunt. Ah, uh, thank you. Good luck to you as well with your continued operations in this fine establishment. Of course. And away we go. And away we go. All right. So, according to your watch, it's getting about time. If you were interested in hearing the briefing to head that way, you do see a large crowd of mostly men kind of heading in the direction of the middle of Main Street. Mm-hmm. Mostly men, you say? Yes. So there's a couple, a few women. There are some some tough-looking ladies that are some, also some heading that way. Some Jane types? Mm-hmm. Okay. Respect. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll head that way as well. I'll join the, join the crowd. All right. So you go head that way, and um, you can see that... Um, everyone's heading toward kind of the police station and crowding into the main front area. All right. And you can see the sheriff Mm -hmm. kind of standing at the front um, against a wall. There's kind of a map up behind him. I'd like to skirt the, uh, the side, the edge of the crowd around one side, rather than elbowing my way to the front. All right, as roll long dexterity. As I can still see a, uh, still see the map. Sure. Dex, dex, dex. Here we go. All right. Oh man, are you serious? <laughs> I need a forty-five for exceptional success, and I rolled a forty-six. <laughs> Do you so, want to spend one luck? One luck on that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, might as well. Fortune favors the bold, after all. All right. So you very deftly make your way through the crowd, um, not really jostling anyone um, or causing any scene as you really push your way to the front. Ooh, nice. And you get a fine look at the sheriff, whose badge clearly says Jenkins on it. Sheriff Jenkins. Okay. He is standing next to you, um, um, a relatively rotund man in a, in a very nice suit. Mm-hmm. No doubt that this is the, um, Mr. Um, Stone or whoever. Lucas Strong. Strong. There you mm-hmm. go. And behind them is a map. It shows Bennington. And then north of it um, is a pretty much um, a wild area. You can see that there is a a relatively large lake to the northeast. But the rest of it looks like hills and forest. Okay. And as you kind of get settled in the location, um, let me go ahead and... This is what you see if you want to come get it. I'll come get it. And the the crowd sort of begins to quiet down a bit. They've been talking excitedly excitedly amongst themselves. Um, But they quiet down a bit as the sheriff kind of takes a position that makes it clear he's about to speak. Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) And... uh, He says, well, I reckon most of you have already heard a bit of what happened. It's uh, news like that spreads fast in a town this size. But Sidney Harris and his gang have kidnapped Jane Strong, daughter of Lucas Strong. Originally, Harris and his gang, originally... Harris demanded a ransom of $10,000 for Jane's return, and a handoff was arranged for last night on the edge of town near the woods. All seemed to be going smoothly until Harris and his men got a little twitchy and lead started flying. Chaos ensued. Both sides were shooting it out. 
The gang did end up shooting two of our officers, and Harris and one other member of the gang got away with the ransom money. They fled into the forest, where we believe they've been holding Jane captive. I'm sure there's much muttering and uh, yeah, uh, similar from the crowd. Yeah, a little bit of gasps and stuff, too, as they kind of talk about, in very plain terms, what happened. Gasp and harumph. Yeah. He says, so we're looking for anyone who is able-bodied, maybe has access to a weapon, but even if you don't, even if you just have a set of good eyes to help us because you know there's a lot of wilderness out there, make our way through the woods and, and try to route out where they might be. Uh, Mr. Strong, I know you had some things you wanted to add. And the man stands up. And he says, well, personally, I am offering $25 per day to anyone who joins the hunt. If anyone finds, let's say finds, the body of Harris, this gang leader. It would be quite the kindness. But beyond that, whoever brings back my daughter will get $5,000 in addition to the per diem that I have set. Hmm. So it's to be assumed that we have to bring back little Jane unharmed. I mean, if she can be found that way. And to collect the reward, I mean, if we find her remains or whatever, you know, it's kind of a macabre question, so I don't know how you ask that right now. That's why I'm saying, and maybe it's just assumed that you bring her back unharmed to collect the reward, and if you bring back her unfortunate remains, that there might not be any reward to be had from the aggrieved and bereaved I mean, you think father. in a man like this, there'd probably still be a reward. You're not sure if it'd be the $5,000 reward. Okay. So there'd be something for your trouble. I see. Right. Um, And uh, it's also heavily implied Harris doesn't have to make it out of there. Um, So he doesn't want him captured alive. Some guys are like, you know, bring me his head. Other guys are like, bring me him so that... Either A, they he can, can face justice or right, whatever. Or B, you know, I want to look in his eyes while, you know, the light goes out or whatever. Like, right. You know, they, they have that bloodlust. Uh, but this guy seems to be like, just whatever. Whatever means necessary, I want my daughter back. Right. And that's why I kind of assume uh, the latter about the daughter reward. Right. So there is a little bit of a hubbub when he mentions the reward and the per diem and bringing back Harris's body, things like that. Um, but you see the sheriff kind of put up a hand and he says, all right, y'all, if you're interested, we'll be meeting in the town square in two hours and that'll be at noon to begin the search. We'll kind of assign little quadrant areas for people to, to get started on with they're searching depending on the size of your group and everything. And uh, that'll allow us also to make a list of those of you who will need payment for your services. Well, all right. Oh, this is, yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Yeah. You got two hours. All right. <laughs> yeah. And so that also means you've got a little bit of time if you need to get some supplies, get some things together. Uh, I'm sure. Sure, the shops on Main Street will be doing a brisk trade today for those of you brave enough to help us out. Hmm. So I just happen to have all my adventuring gear all ready. Yep. I just have to go pick it up from my room at the uh, the, the Mathis Lodge. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well. But you did notice as you kind of walked through the area, there were a few businesses that you could stop in if you wanted to. There is a place that straight up says on the sign, Hardware and Guns. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Sears. <laughs> Back there, in the day. <laughs> there is a library. Mm -hmm. There is a small newspaper office. 
Um, and various small shops, haberdasheries, that sort of thing along the main street. Mm, I think I have everything I need, you know, if I'm honest. At this point... But let's check out the bookstore. The library? Uh, yes. Sorry. I had bookstore in mind because there was a bookstore attached to the cafe, but um, you just mentioned a library. Right. So I'll try it. I'm going to check out there first. Okay. Uh, so you get to the library. I mean, it's relatively small, but it seems to be well maintained. If there was anything you wanted to search for in the archives, you could certainly do so. I'm going to look for any strange happenstances regarding the heart of the forest. All right. Um, so I need you to go ahead and use your library use. Mm -hmm. Library use it is. Coming right up. And that's a, that's a paddling. <laughs> uh, no, that didn't work. <laughs> Wasn't even close, like not luck worthy or not, anything. Yeah, no, not even remotely. Okay. I rolled a seventy-eight, and I needed a twenty or less. <laughs> uh, so searching on your own, you're not really able to find much of interest. Hmm. There's certainly a librarian you could talk to if you wanted to do that. Let's talk to the librarian. Okay. Is she about eighty-seven years old? <laughs> You want you want an old lady librarian? Uh, n no, I just kind of envision a 1920s librarian as being, you know, ancient and female. But okay. it doesn't have to be. No, we'll go with that. Whatever you want. So Ingrid <laughs> is sitting. You're not sure if she's asleep. She appears to be breathing, but she is um, behind the circulation desk. Yeah, excellent. Well, in my um patented charming way I'll have to come up and put one arm on the desk and bid her good morning does she have a name tag or a name plate it, the name plate says Ingrid like that? fantastic good morning Ingrid and how are you today oh, oh hello oh hello <laughs> not many coming in here today <laughs> Sorry, your old lady <laughs> voice is hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. It's a serious uh, game. The, a serious voice. Yeah, that's that's all right. Oh, yes, indeed. It's quite the morning, isn't it? Have you heard? There's uh, been quite the ruckus out by the edge of the forest. Oh, yes. Mm. But the woods have, you know, a strange history. If anything was going to happen in this town, it's always going to be in the woods. You don't say. That is the very reason I came to your fine library, to find some information about such interesting happenings in the heart of this dark forest by your fine town. And I was unable to find any information. Tell me, do you have any interesting stories about the such things? Well, you're not going to find much in a book. Uh, no one writes about Bennington. But our newspaper has been in operation for years and years and we have an archive of Bennington banner stories uh, detailing things from the civil war and even before that civil war you say interesting anything about deserters and cabins and hiding out in the woods and similar oh we have numerous articles going back to the civil war about the forest being used as a hideout for fugitives trying to evade conscription into the union army Tell me, Ingrid, were I but able to tear my eyes away from you, would I be able to clap them on some of these articles? Oh, I could definitely put them together. That would be fantastic. I would owe you such debt of gratitude. All right. I want you to choose one of your social skills to try to see if you can talk your way maybe into some extra information. All right. Call a Cthulhu pro tip. Put some points in social skills. <laughs> or have a group <laughs> where someone can. <laughs> or, yeah, play with more than, you know, one, like, <laughs> person. Yeah, this isn't your strong suit, so it's not something your character would normally do, and that's fine. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, 
I've been pretty charming with her, so I'm going to go with charm. That's, that sounds good. Uh, and no, not going to happen. Okay. So she um, scurries off to the newspaper archive area and comes back with a couple of articles for you. They look very old. And you do... I mean, it kind of tells you what you've heard her and the um, the hunter who talked to you at the speakeasy mm-hmm. have already told you. But the kind of some details you do get is one like famous deserter in particular has a name, and that is Joseph Turner. The article states that he was quite infamous for hiding out in the woods with a few others who were looking to avoid conscription. Mm -hmm. And the article states that he died in the woods. Mm, I see. Any more information about him that might be useful? I need to focus on this guy now to see if I can gather more information. Just from what I've learned from my last adventure information about this guy is probably going to be important. All right. Uh, Go ahead and make a library use to see if you can find anything about Joseph Turner in in particular. Here we go. So you can roll a social nerdy library character and gather all the information and then go die. (laughs) Or you can roll a combat character and not learn shit, but (laughs) then like... Go so not live. be prepared, but <laughs> right. potentially shoot everyone anyway. <laughs> not be prepared, but at least be like tough and you know capable and yeah. So so far, I'm like that's. I, I hate to make it binary, but it does seem <laughs> to eighty two. All right, I didn't I didn't cut it either. Yep. Unfortunately, you're not able to find anything in the records, and Ingrid doesn't seem to recall anything specifically about that name. Gotcha. He has probably her high school gym teacher or something. <laughs> Okay, uh, away we go, I guess, because okay. I don't think I'm going to find anything more in here. And I'm all stocked up, you know? I feel like... Yeah, did you replenish your, your spent bullets? Yeah, before I left, I would have, you know, purchased a box of cartridges and sharpened up my old hunting knife and all and that your new knife? stuff. And my, my new one, which is at the bottom of my pack, wrapped securely and... I don't know, canvas. Sure. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I just, I really can't think of anything else I would need in town. I already had breakfast, coffee, and, and ham, and, and eggs, and toast. And talk to, man, now you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> talk to Ingrid about the woods, I'm gathering some information there. So, yeah, I think I'm straight. I think I'm going to be the first person in the town square, if possible, depending on our time time frame. Here. Yeah, I think you can get there pretty early. Um, I think there'd be maybe a couple of people who are like, as soon as they heard the news, they were super prepared. And they're basically camping out, waiting for this payday. Um, but there is, the crowd is very small when you arrive in the town square. Good. That means either there's a tiny turnout or I'm early, and I'm thinking it's probably going to be the latter. But we'll see. So you kind of pick a good spot. You can tell just by the way the square is set up that the sheriff is likely to kind of hold court, as it were, from the center of the square where there is a statue um, commemorating the brave Union soldiers. Um, but, uh, you can see as time goes on, um, more and more groups of volunteers are, are starting to gather. Mm -hmm. And then the sheriff shows up without Lucas Strong. And he begins to kind of split off, um, set like pairs and singles and like small groups into various hunting parties. Mm-hmm. I see. 
Um, and he kind of gives you gives everyone like little assignments, like you're gonna enter the woods at at this location, and everyone's kind of kind of moving a line to kind of tighten the noose, as it were. Ah, uh-huh. I see. Sounds like a good plan. And so he gives you instructions for a location, seeing that you're not from around here. That's actually pretty close to town Mm -hmm. Hmm. uh, as your starting point. Okay. Does that put it furthest from the uh, heart of the woods? Um, Well, really, I mean, the heart of the woods is going to be north. Mm -hmm. Um, But your location that he's assigned you is relatively close to the shootout location, actually. Oh. Because it's pretty close to town. Okay. And he kind of sets you up. He's like, this location is going to be the easiest to find. There's going to be a lot of officers there because it is, I mean, pretty much the scene of the shootout from the night before. We've got it pretty cleaned up, but uh, it's a clearing about 100 yards across at the edge of the forest. Um, so you'll have no problem finding it. Fair enough. And he kind of gives everyone instructions like, all right, we're all going to get started about the same time. Go as deep into the woods as you're comfortable. If you find something, feel free to come back and report it. You don't have to endanger yourself. And he takes down everyone's uh, name and such. Yes. For the per diem. Are you going to give him your real name and where you're staying and everything? Of course. Okay. So he takes that down, says we can, well, you know, just check in when you get back, and we'll make sure that's available to you. Hmm. We have an accord. Okay. So I'm going to proceed to my starting location straight away. At least I'd like to proceed to yeah. my starting location straight away. You, s- you certainly can. So you make your way through town uh, to the edge of town, and you can see an area of the woods near town that looks like it's been newly cleared as like a sort of logging area Mm -hmm. um and there is a dirt track from the main road that heads over kind of a small field to the edge of that clearing i see Mm, okay uh is it like roped off or anything like that is there a squad car or a sheriff or anybody posted here to keep an eye on the crime scene or anything like that? What you can see it is that it's been relatively cleared out. Um, you can, like, the area is littered with stumps of trees, and you can see that deeper in, it's surrounded by the taller old growth that's in the area. Um, but you do see over, scattered over the site is evidence of what happened the night before. So there are discarded shotgun shells, bullet casings, bullet holes in trees and stumps, and a couple of pretty heavy blood stains uh, where uh, some people were gunned down. Uh, the other, otherwise, the area is really almost ominously quiet. Um, and the, from the directions that you were given, uh, your goal is to head northeast into the woods from here. Okay. Well, I'd like to at least take a look around here, see if there are any clues I can pick up. Okay. So there is a track skill. There is a survival skill. There's spot hidden. Like, what kind of thing are you doing? I think I'm going to look for a spot hidden. Okay. And no dice. I mean, there are two dice. (laughs) They say 47, and I need a 28. Oh, okay. So, um, besides what I described, you don't see anything in particular. Okay. So, I'm going to, you know, refer to the directions to the lost cabin from uh, Zeke back in the roadhouse and uh, see if I can't proceed northeast into, uh, into the woods. So, thinking back to the directions you're given, the cabin is relatively northeast it's a little bit more north than east so you would be heading in generally the right direction okay good cool all right so before we get too far into the woods what did you decide to wear on your trek today i'm wearing my uh my hiking mountaineering uh gear you know with my uh 
my wool trousers and my knee high boots and um my I mean what what's the what season is it? I mean, I don't what, what what's the weather like? We'll say that it's the end of summer approaching fall. So just not not a coat, you know, but maybe um a uh, a wool shirt over my, you know, like like you know how you walk into like Eddie Bauer and and they show the they have the black and white picture of right. the like, you know, guy in the woods like exploring, hiking and whatever. Right. Like, you know, that that sort of stuff. Right. Okay. So you have like kind of your typical like kind of if you were going out for a day of like climbing or something, this right. is what you would wear and carry with you. Yeah. So so you're not, you know, you're not wearing a suit, you know. You're wearing your wool trousers that are like maybe, you know, um only like uh I won't say tucked into your like knee high lace up hiking boots, mountaineering boots, but right. they're you know, shorter and stuff like that. Right. For the uh the gentleman outdoors, but you also have like um your your wool shirt and then your like vest with your chain and all that kind of stuff and uh your suspenders and your pistol on your side and your uh knife on on, on the other side and your pack on your back, all that kind of thing. Sure. So that that's my standard, you know, warm Warm, but tending to cool weather, uh, mountaineering, hiking, exploring gear. Sure. So you start to head northeast, which is not too difficult for you to determine the direction of. I mean, you have some experience being outside. You understand how to tell direction by the sun and things like that. Mm. And uh, you start making your way into the forest. So I'd like you to go ahead and make a track roll. All right, time to get lost. Do so you have a default of 10? Yes. <laughs> 42. Okay. So you don't notice anything in particular as you make your way into the woods. Every once in a while, you, like, scare a deer that, like, runs off into the nearby trees. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't see anything alarming in particular as you make your way through the forest. So you continue to make your way. Um, the forest still isn't quite thick enough here that you're not able to track direction. And and I do have a compass. Oh, okay. So that's part of your gear? Yes. Awesome. Well, then it's very easy for you, and I don't have to make you roll for that later. So that's nice. Oh, that's good. I do want you to make a listen check, though. Good. Finally, something I'm decent at. Fail, but fail. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's success, um, oh. and then it's ma- what? What are the success levels? Exceptional, major, extreme, super duper. Yeah, so it's hard mm-hmm. and extreme. So I got a hard success. I beat the top little number. Oh, okay. So not fail boat then. No. I, I wasn't able to curse you. No. All right. So up ahead, you hear the crunch of twigs. Crunch. Okay, I am going to stop and take cover. All right. With stealth. Sure. Or is there is is hide different from stealth? Stealth is usually for moving, and hide is for hiding, which is not moving. Um. So I don't have hide on my sheet. All right. Then just use stealth. So I just have stealth. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm gonna try and t- take cover. Stop and take cover. All right, and boom, major success. Okay, so a hard success? Oh, sorry, yeah, hard success. All right, make a spot hidden check. Okay. This is where you're going to get your fail curse. Yeah, (laughs) I need a 28, I rolled a 98. Oh, okay, so not even close. Mm -hmm. So you hear the approach of what now sounds quite like footsteps through the forest. Not like an animal or anything like that. Like humans clomping. Um, And then, so you hear, especially as the forest sounds kind of die down with humans walking through the forest. Mm -hmm. 
you kind of hide in your little spot and you hear a very oh, distinct yeah. sound and it's quite loud. Mm. Sound of a shot from a rifle. I see. Hmm. Um, and because you hid quite well, you're not really in any danger of being hit. I will tell you that. And a moment after the rifle goes off, kind of the normal forest sounds pick back up again. And um, you can see now coming out of the woods towards you um, what looks like a, a father and son or an adult and a younger male. Okay. Um, and you can see that the father has his like hand out kind of doing the seatbelt hand that moms do in the car. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in front of the boy. Universal, yeah. And he's like, gun discipline. Like, watch watch where your finger is. You don't need to be firing into the woods. There could be people out here. <laughs> All right. Do they seem to be hunters? Um, They are dressed like hunters almost stereotypically. Um, Go ahead and make... I would say either a spot hidden or a psychology or even um, like an anthropology would be appropriate here. I'm going to go with spot hidden, if I may. All right. So it, the double zero on the tens place is 100, right? Unless your other one is also not a zero. Right. So if it's a double zero and a non-zero... Then, then it's, it's a singleton. It's just a singleton. Right. Okay, so it was a finally a success on my spot hidden. It is a hard success on spot hidden. I rolled a six. All right, don't forget to check it if you haven't already. I finally get to check spot Woo! hidden. Just going to keep trying. They don't look like experienced hunters. They look like city folk that have bought all the things to be hunters. Hmm. Okay. So they might be out here beating the brush, looking around for the reward or whatever. Or they might be hunting. I don't know. Like maybe they're out here camping and they haven't heard yet. Okay. Uh, well, I, I would like to... Uh, I, I don't want to startle them and perhaps get drilled by little Tommy. <laughs> so, so I'd like to announce my, my presence, you know, if possible. Okay. Or I can say, uh, you there on the trail. Yes, yes, you, father and son. I'm here. Please don't be alarmed. I'd like to come out and speak with you. All right. And so the man says, I told you, George, there are people out here. You need to be more careful. Please don't shoot. I'm, I'm friendly. I'm coming out now, if that's all right. All right. And so he kind of like takes the rifle away from George, George. and um, <laughs> walks in your direction. Cool. I'd like to step out in, in a very non-threatening manner. I mean, I'm not going to do the whole, like, hands-up sort of deal, right. you know, but, but but assume a generally non-threatening body language posture and just stroll towards them casually. Sure. So it's like, ah, oh, hey, it's actually good to see another person out here. We're uh, sort of keeping to the edge of the forest. Uh, Georgie here was getting a little scared in the woods. Uh, indeed, the forest can be quite frightening at a young age. Hey there, you rapscallion, and ruffle little George's hair. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Alistair Lawson. It's very nice to meet you. Ah, well met indeed, sir. I'm Carl Loft of Boston, Mass late of Boston, Massachusetts. Ah, we're from Boston as well. Oh, indeed, it is a small world. Well... Uh, it's, uh, what are the chances of running into you here outside of Bennington, eh? Well, we came out for a hunting trip with our friends, Brian and, and Arthur. Um, but, you know, like I said, George was having some trouble out in the woods, so Brian and Arthur went a little bit deeper in to find some better game, and we're kind of staying a little bit closer to town. Oh, but have you heard, sir? There's been quite the commotion in town this morning. No, I, I hadn't. Well, I've just come from town this, day, this very morning, and I must tell you, I'm on a bit of a quest, you see, for Mr. Lucas Strong and Sheriff Jenkins, for uh, Mr. Strong's young daughter Jane was taken prisoner, I've heard, 
uh, by the nefarious gangster Harris, and they're hiding out in these very woods. Why, these woods are going to be crawling with the posse looking for her. Even as we speak, I myself am a member of this posse, and we're going to find her, bring her back, and claim the reward. Oh, my God. With kidnappers, but I'll probably just take George back into town. Uh, but do, I mean, do me a favor if you can. Keep a lookout for Brian and his son Arthur. You can't miss Brian. He has a big old... Texas hat? I don't know what they're called. Mm, yes, yes, those big ten-gallon capers that they wear down that way. <laughs> oh, and uh, on our way back this way, we also ran into a group of artists, also from Boston. Uh, they are doing a project for the university, painting wildlife and landscapes and such. They have a camp a little bit further along. Uh, if you run into them, you might want to tell them the news as well. So, at this point... I, will, I would like to have dug my notebook out of my, <clears throat> excuse me, cargo pocket and its associated stub of pencil. And having tapped the stub of pencil on my tongue, I'm taking notes. Uh, Brian, you said. And uh, what was your other associate's name? Oh, his son is Arthur. Brian and son Arthur. Also artists. Okay. Yes, a group of them. They were camping in the woods a bit further in. Um, they said they were from the university in Boston working on wildlife and landscape painting. Is that just down this trail here? Can I miss it? Or, I mean, I want to know what to look out for. It's a little bit more east uh, of where we are right now. Um, I really hope they don't get caught up in all this. They were quite kind to us when we were coming back this way. If I see them, I should be sure to warn them. And you're headed back to town, you say, with young George for his safety. Yeah, I I mean, he hasn't really been having a great time as it is and with kidnappers out there. I don't, I'm not very comfortable uh, staying out with him in all this. Yes, yes, quite wise. Most visible. Uh, well, splendid. And uh, I, I bid you good day then, so I shall continue on my quest and uh, wish you the best of luck on your journey back to town safely. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the news. That's definitely... Very helpful to me, and we'll just head back into the town to the lodge and maybe just wait for Brian and Arthur to get back. Indeed. Well, good day then. And I would like to proceed down the trail All right. uh, away from um, George and his, his father. I'd like you to make another tracking roll, please. Uh, good luck to me on this one. <laughs> actually close but no no cigar how 20, close 21 so i'd have to blow 11 luck and that's not gonna happen okay so again for a while all you really see is a uh, more you know wildlife some crows some foxes even that you kind of flesh out of an area as you walk through um and then it's starting to get dark and you think maybe it might be a good idea to look for a good place to set up camp okay that does make sense i'm gonna stay out here all night if it kills me all right dun, so dun, dun. finding a clearing is relatively easy um there isn't anything really weird or crazy and you can find a gap in the trees that's big enough to set up um some uh, what you arrange for sleeping do you want to describe what you have to set up for your camp maybe yeah, I have a uh, a tarp and a bedroll, and um, to make sort of a lean-to type of shelter, as opposed to a tent, and um, I'd like to gather some small rocks to make a a ring for the fire. Okay. And that's uh, really it, you know, a, a little cook pot and. And so on with, uh, you know, that could be used to boil water, to sanitize it or make coffee or whatever else I need. Um, here's the thing. <laughs> I am an avid outdoorsman, but I'm not very good at it because I don't have survival, literally, to save my life. 
Well, survival would be more if you were going to, like, kind of scavenge for some food and things like that as part of your setting up for camp. As far as the basics, especially with the supplies you have, I don't think you'd have any problem putting that together. So it's kind of realistic in that, right. you know, your average city slicker can go to the sporting goods store and buy some stuff. To right. Like- go out in the woods. It's not like an infomercial where you get your (laughs) like tarp out and you just like rifle it in your hands and it gets all tangled up and you're like, what do I do? (laughs) You roll yourself up like a burrito (laughs) and roll down the mountain and fall in the river. Right. (laughs) Okay. Uh, That's good to know because yeah, he he would have done that. That's, That's his level of skill. You know, if there's extreme conditions, he's probably screwed. But, you know, for your basic weekend, weekender type camping, you know, he's he's read the book and set up his little, you know, um, uh, tarp sort of, you know, lean-to shelter. With right. The fire appropriately oriented next to it and so on and and all of that and cleared away the brush and gathered some firewood, etc. All right. And so you go to sleep? No. What do you do? No. I'm going to stay up. And see if I can spot any other campfires. Okay. At least I'd like to try to stay up. Maybe, you know, the day's exertion will overcome me. I don't know, but th- that's my plan. Okay. So go ahead and make a spot hidden roll to see if you notice anything. Ooh. Here we go, spot hidden. Um, oh, 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 damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I thought that was a 26, so I was all excited. It's actually a 29, so I failed by one point, which means I'm going to blow a luck and move that down to 28 if possible. Okay, yeah, you can definitely do that. So you are secure in the knowledge that you do not see signs of any other campfires in the nearby area. Okay. Wow. But I would like you to make a listen check. Yes. Listen to the sounds of the woods at night. And hmm, that is a success. All right. So while you don't see anything, no lights, no fire, you hear the sound, the faint sound, so not too close by, of a truck engine in the distance. But again, no lights. Okay. Um, It's difficult to determine how far away the sound is, but is it light enough that I feel like I could creep towards that uh, without a lantern or similar? It's getting dark enough out here just because there's no light pollution or anything Mm -hmm. um, that you don't think you'd have a very easy time, especially with how far away it sounded. Um, with making your way towards it without light in any significant capacity. Because at night, if I have a light source, I'm just painting myself. Right. You could definitely make note of the direction and check it out in the morning. Yeah, I think I'll I'll do that. If I can maybe, you know, in the the light of my own fire, sort of try to triangulate it with my ears and look at my compass and make a note of, okay, it seems to be due... You know, north by northwest or whatever. Right. Um, So you... Let's see. I would say it's definitely from where you are north-northeast of where you are. Okay. Well, I'll check that out first thing in the morning. All right. Are you going to go to sleep? Um, no. I think I'm going to stay up and... uh, try to rely on my somewhat robust constitution to, um, I'm not going to try to stay up all night, Okay. but I'm going to try to stay up as much as possible and only, you know, go on as little sleep as possible. Okay. So sure. I'd like to stay up at least half the night if I can. Okay. I think that's fair. All right. So... Um, besides the one kind of truck noise and some various wildlife noise and the sound of your fire, um, uh, there's not really anything else that kind of catches your senses. And after a while with kind of the nice 
gentle sounds of nature, you do fall asleep for a bit. And I'd like you to make a pow roll with a bonus die. I see. All right. Here we go. Um. <laughs> All right. I, <laughs> I rolled 50 on both dice. Oh, okay. Uh, and my pow is only 25, so that's not going to... It's not going to cut it. All right, so I need you to roll 1d4, please. 1d4. Here we go. Do I do I get lost in time and space? Yes. I rolled a 1. All right, no. Um. So your sleep that you do fall into is far from restful. You toss and turn from side to side, bombarded throughout the darkness by images that you barely recall when you awake. Maybe it's the trek through the forest that's influencing this, influencing this. But all you remember is the dark trees surrounding you, the sickly yellowing leaves falling to the ground. Mm -hmm. And you feel a terrible foreboding, like oh. something is out there, oh, no. watching, waiting. Oh. And when you wake, you feel exhausted, like you didn't sleep at all. Like I ran through the forest all night instead of rested quietly all right so just so you know the way exhaustion is going to work for you is for the next day anytime you have to make a con roll you're gonna have a penalty die which is like a bonus die but opposite <laughs> okay and that's going to be in effect until you sleep again i am exhausted i thought that i was made of stern stuff but it turns out that uh, my night of not sleeping really took it out of me. Yeah, and then what sleep you had was quite restless. So it was it was a tough night. But that being said, your con is still really high. Well, relatively high. So even with a penalty die, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll find failure in constitution rules. Okay. I drink uh, coffee or anything to counteract that. <laughs> Um, well, let's see. I don't know if that's a thing in this game. Sometimes, you know, you drink whiskey to, to restore your sanity. You drink right. coffee. Well, it's not that like coffee has exhaustion. a stat or anything, but, um, yeah, I will say as part of your camping stuff, if you had some coffee, then at least for the first few hours after you drink it, that could counteract the effect of your exhaustion. But it wouldn't be all day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee's definitely not all day. Right. Especially if you drink it every day. All right. So as the light starts to peek through the trees, you kind of waken naturally from your slumber. And I'd like you to make another listen check, please. Listen check. Boom. All right. Uh, that is a success. So as you're starting to come into consciousness, in the very, very far distance, you can kind of hear the faint sound of another rifle shot. Hmm. Um, and you don't know if it's hunters getting an early start or what it might be, but you definitely hear that sound and it is coming from the northeast. I see. Um, now that's kind of the direction of the artist camp. The artist camp is a little bit more northerly than northeast, but yes, everything kind of so far has been in that direction. I see. Now what about the truck sound? The truck sound was definitely northeast. All right. Uh, I think I'll head that way. Okay. So, let me pull up some stew. All right. As you start to break your camp and kind of pack everything up, you notice that northeast takes you into what you would consider more of the deep woods. Ah. Uh. Okay, see. Is it maybe uh, harder going now a little bit? Um, it's definitely a little bit more tree choked. For okay. sure. Hmm. All right. Um but really, I mean, it's almost like you can tell you're getting farther from town. You're getting more into old growth and things like that. Okay. All right. So, you continue your trek through the woods. You're trying to head in the direction of the trek, correct? Yes. 
All right. So you head in the direction that you heard the truck in before. Um, and as you progress, I'd like you to go ahead and make a listen check. And that, boys and girls, is an extreme success. All right. So as you head in that direction, you remember very clearly the sound of the truck. And after a while, you actually come across a trail of tire tracks that cut through the forest floor heading northeast. Hmm. I'd like you to roll navigation, please, or navigate. Let's see. Uh, navigate. Ooh. Oh, no. I have my default here. <laughs> Where is my extreme success roll for navigate? Uh, no. No, sir. Okay. No, ma'am. So, you don't really have a great idea, based on the direction of the tire tracks, where that truck might have been heading from exactly. You kind of try to think back to the map that you saw on the wall behind the sheriff, but nothing really comes to mind. All you can remember is forests and lakes in that area. Mm -hmm. um, but you're kind of thinking about it. You're standing there looking at the tire tracks, and after a while you hear the sound of an engine again. Oh, oh no. What do you do? Uh, I'm going to see if I can hide in the brush by the side of the road. Okay. Okay, 56. And that's a normal Plano success. Okay. So, after a moment, you see a truck materialize out of the trees along this same track, kind of heading back in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Um, What would you like to do? Uh, just observe it, see if I can determine anything about this truck. It's driver, it's uh, license, it's uh, any information, it's apparent age, All right. so on. So, all the description, all that. I mean, for the time, um, there aren't a lot of variety of vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, this is definitely more of like what would pass for like a pickup truck okay. at the time. Um, and it doesn't have any sort of license plates or anything on it. And it's not marked really in any way. Um, it's kind of dirty, like it makes this tr trek probably relatively often. Um, mm -hmm. And you can see inside is just a driver. Just one guy. Yes. Okay. Um, and in the back of the truck, there are what appear to be maybe some like boxes and barrels and things like that, like loosely covered with a tarp. Mm hmm could be a bootlegger all right hmm and he's coming down the road towards me yes hmm. i would like to step out into the road and see if i can uh stop him and because i think he's a bootlegger i feel like if i try to flag him down or whatever he's just gonna blow right past me mm -hmm. perhaps even risk running me over so i'm going I would like to step out into the road, draw my pistol, fire a warning shot, and hold up a hand saying, stop. All right. So when you do, the truck comes to a stop. <laughs> the driver rolls down his window, mm -hmm. leans out, <laughs> and almost monotone huh? says, you probably shouldn't stand in front of a truck. I agree. But you must agree that you are definitely in harm's way if you don't stop right now. Which you have, and I appreciate that. Thank you. However, I'm in need of some information, friend. Perhaps you can help me. How can I help you? Where are you headed, and what is your cargo? I'm heading back from the camp. The geological site where uh, Mr. Carl White and Mr. Strong are setting up at the reservoir. I see. The very self-same Mr. Strong that has uh, recently lost his daughter to bandits in these same woods. Is that Mr. Strong? I don't know nothing about that. I, I'm just part of the uh, survey team where he's building the new reservoir. 
But this would be Mr. Lucas Strong of Bennington, a large man in a white suit. Yes. Uh, Sometimes he's out at the site to check in with Mr. Carl White. I see. And your job here is to ferry uh, what exactly between the site and town? Carrying surveying tools, uh, shovels, dynamite, the like. Hmm. I see. Well, just stay there. Just stay there. I'd like to take a look in the bed of the pickup to see if his story checks out with pickaxes and what have you. In the I'm back. not going to stop you, but keep in mind some of my cargo is dangerous. I don't intend to touch anything or poke around too closely. I just want to take a look at it. Just yeah. Look. So, like, kind of like lifting the tarp slightly. Right. You do see it's pickaxes, shovels. Um, and then some very like clearly labeled crates of explosives. And trucks, you trucks make this route regularly then? Yep, carrying supplies to and fro. I'm sorry to have troubled you, friend. Uh, please carry on. I do apologize. I'll well, I mean, you do pistol. say there's kidnapping. I'll definitely... Uh, let those at the camp know when I head back that way. It's definitely a concern for those types to be in the area. And when might that be? Would you be expected back this way? Uh, I need to get a few more things and trade out some of these old worn items at the general store. So I should be back probably later today. Mm, I see. Well, good luck. Best of luck then. Carry on. And without really saying anything in goodbye to you, <laughs> he just leans back in, rolls up the window, and drives off. Ah, country stoicism. That's <laughs> quite refreshing. Uh, I think I'll carry on up the road then, on account of, you know, um, there's a geological survey and, and whatnot, but um, as long as the road is in line with my... Uh, destination, or maybe I have to carry on perpendicular to the road. I don't know where I need to go here. Well, where are you trying to go exactly? Are you just trying to follow the tracks to the geological survey site? Uh, no. Are you uh, trying to go to the artist camp? Uh, hmm. Sorry, well, I just... Everything was in the direction of kind of, in, in the same general direction. The truck noise, the artist camp... The hunter camp. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit the, of deviation. Like, like, you know, the artist camp was a little bit more northward than the direction of the truck. Mm -hmm. But they're all generally the same direction, but you would have to adjust yourself a little bit to head that way. Yeah, I think, honestly, I'm going to bear in mind that there might be artists and whatnot in the area. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I'm going to err on heading straight towards the uh, deserter's cabin. Okay. So you are doing your best to like kind of follow the directions and the signs that were given to you for the location of the cabin. Okay. Um, and I mean, you've been following kind of the direction to the truck, which remember you heard was quite far away. Mm -hmm. um, and you're continuing to head kind of past that, although kind of staying near ish to the road. Cause everything, like you said, is kind of in a similar direction. And uh, it's, Starting to get a little bit before dusk. Oh, wow. I've been hiking all day. Yeah, most of the day. Mm. I need you to make a spot hidden roll, please. And I'm looking for a hard success. Ooh, that's a tall order, little lady. And no. No success of any kind. All right. I need you to make a luck roll, please. A luck roll? Now, how do these work? So whatever your current luck is, that's what you want to roll under. Oh, simple. Yep. <laughs> Not simple enough. Close, but no cigar. I rolled a 72. I, my current luck is 69. Uh, okay. Did you want to spend luck to get down to where you need to be? Um, three luck points? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? All right. So I made my luck roll, apparently. Okay. So you continue to move forward in that direction. Um, and 
up ahead, you can kind of see what's sort of like um, a bit of a rock formation that forms kind of natural cover. And as you get closer, you can see that there is someone kind of laying out on the rock with a rifle. Hmm. I see. He doesn't appear to have spotted you at this point. No. Okay. That's what your luck roll is for. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, let's creep up on this guy. All right. You will need stealth to try to get the drop on him. I'm going to try to get the drop on this dude. Just to creep up close enough to see what his deal is. Is what I'm trying to do here. Right. Okay. Oh, right. That is the the like extremist success I've ever rolled. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. That's a two. Oh, nice. So yeah. All right. So you creep forward. Mm hmm And you can clearly see men. He's definitely dressed to be out in the wilderness. And he has. Um, what you would recognize, actually, go ahead and roll your firearms rifle slash shotgun. Okay. This one I'm not quite as skilled in. Uh, no, yeah, I have no idea. All right. You can tell it's a rifle. Okay. And it's... he's kind of keeping a watch out from the area he can see below the ledge. Tis neither pistol nor shotgun. Right. right. <laughs> so it must be a rifle. Okay. Uh, and and he's he's surveying his field of fire. Right. Okay, that seems strange. In in an area where we would be, you know, tracking for people, this kind of smacks of bad guyanism uh, to me. Hmm. So I'd like to see if I can subdue this guy, um, you know, without much of a fuss. And the way you do that when you have a pistol and the drop on somebody is, you know, they're there like focused on something and the pistol comes in from the side of the, you know, frame to the, the back or side or what have you, you know, of them and kind of pokes them and that alerts them to your presence that they are got. So they need to like chill. Okay. Um, I want you to go ahead and roll um, an intimidation. <laughs> it's just as long as you don't say intimidate, I'll be fine. With a bonus die. <laughs> no, I don't have high hopes. <laughs> but, but we're going to try. Okay. The thing is, with that good of a stealth roll, I should be like right up on this guy's nose. Oh, yeah, for sure. And so if my intimidate role doesn't go well, where it's like, I don't believe, then I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, gun to the head, right. basically. So, but fine, don't believe me, but. No, <laughs> that's not the issue, but yes, go ahead. Oh, God, intimidate is so bad. All right, so just to set the stage, you know, the, right. the like, pistol barrel comes in from from the 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 side of the the frame and like nudges the guy and it's like all right friend take it nice and easy and then maybe that's as far as i get before right. i make my intimidate roll right okay um holy shit um okay okay i rolled a 16 right uh my intimidate is 15 right so i'm gonna have to blow some luck to make this work sure so I'll do that. Probably worth it. Yeah. I, I mean, if it's within one point, I mean, what's the point of having all that luck if you don't use it? All right. So, you know, you make your kind of calm statement. You have the pistol against head. You make the sound of it like cocking or whatever you want to do, like depending on the type of pistol. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And he kind of like stiffens and he goes, oh, Eugene, you're in the shit now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Eugene. Just take it easy. Nice and quiet. Nice and easy now. I surrender. I need medical attention. Oh, <laughs> uh, this corn pone. <laughs> just cracking me up. Okay. So I'll see if with my other hand, if I can maybe slide the rifle out, like, away from him a little bit. 
you know? Yeah, he, like, has taken his hands off him. He has both of them kind of up. He's in a prone position, yeah. but he's kind of, like, put his hands up in front of him. All right. Cool. So I'll just advise him to just just rest easy. Is he, like, does he have, like, gray hair, white hair, black hair? Like He has um a sparse skullet of gray hair. Nice. So I can call him old timer and it won't be out of place. Right. Just rest easy there, old timer. I don't mean you any harm. I just need to ascertain the nature of your intentions here. Oh, like I said, I'm hurt. I'm delirious. I tell you, I am. You're delirious and covering the valley below with this rifle. Is that what you want me to believe? Oh, it's true. I am. Just last night, I saw someone coming over. I took a shot at him. I swear I hit him, but he just walked away like it was nothing. I, that can't be right, so my brain's got to be somewhere not quite in this realm. I'm actually starting to believe you, Gene, here, because I did hear a shot. And, you know, I have heard that these woods are, you know, somewhat supernatural, so to speak. So, um... I'm I'm kind of starting to relax a little bit. What what exactly are you doing out here, Eugene? I I, I took a shot from the police. I'm I'm hurt. I've got a fever. I'm delirious, but I surrender. You can take me back wherever you need to, son. I see. Are you with those men who have young Jane Strong? Tell me the truth now. No, it was Harris that did the kidnapping. I didn't want anything to do with that. But he said if I didn't help him find out that I w- he would shoot me. I see. Well, you, I'll tell you what's going to happen now, Eugene. You're going to lead me back to them. I, I, I can give you directions to the cabin. I can tell you where, where and she was. But I, I can't go back there. I'm hurt. Um, eh. I'll see if I can look him over and see if he's hurt uh, with my one in medicine. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like you don't even need medicine to look for like blood no, stain. Medicine would be to determine like, like how that. serious, like what you can do to fix it and stuff like that. You can look at him. Yeah. Just generally like, does he seem, are there bones poking out or there right. blood spots? I mean, obvious signs. Of it looks injury. like he was shot. Pretty good in the leg. Uh-huh. There's a lot okay. of blood. Um, most of it's dry, but you can still see a bit of a seeping wound. Okay. Um, and uh, he'd definitely be slow, slow going. Hmm. Okay. He's winged. I see. Yeah, you know, having him lead me to the cabin's probably not going to work out. So I'm definitely going to. Uh, um. Hmm. I done saw the girl before the shootout. I did not go back after that. I found myself a little old hidey hole, and I've been here ever since. I don't have any rope or anything like that. I'd have to, like, cut up a shirt or something, <laughs> like, to to tie him up. Uh, but how am I going to take notes, you know, if uh, if I have to hold a gun on him? Hmm. I'm just going to have to remember it the best I can. Right. And have him tell me where to go. I ain't going nowhere, friend. You can take me back to the police tomorrow as long as they let me go to that there hospital clinic. Because I ain't done got shot in the leg. Uh, we'll see what we can do about that in due course, Eugene. For right now, my utmost priority is finding young Jane. Well, it's fixing to get dark here soon. You might just want to station up in this old hidey hole that I got because I don't know how far you're going to get today. That's true. I'll have to take my chances. You need to start making with the instructions. All right, but like I said, there's some weird Uh, things happening (laughs) here at night in these old woods. Or I'm delirious. That's also a possibility. I did lose some blood. Damn it, Eugene. <laughs> Don't make me pistol whip you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he gives you directions, including some pretty clear landmarks. Okay, and I'm not able to write them down. I'm holding my gun on him the whole time. Okay. So I don't trust him. 
Um, it sounds like the cabin is north of a set of like a large lake area. Um, and from what you can understand, it seems again to be in that general direction of kind of everything that's been going on. Um, you know, the same direction that the truck was going towards, um, although a little bit off from that. I mean, everything seems to be kind of in this northeasterly deep woods direction. That's all the directions I can give you. That's probably what you want to do. But like I said, I probably could use some help or whatever. I mean, all right, Eugene. Well, I, I don't have a uh, sorry. <clears throat> well, Eugene, I apologize. I don't have any skill in terms of healing. Uh, see to that leg. Take care of yourself. I'm sure someone will be along shortly. Uh, I have to press on. All right, but it, uh, do I get to keep that there rifle in case those weird bullet men's come back? Oh, of course you do. I'd love to leave an armed man covering my back who I've just met with a rifle. No, you don't keep, get to keep the rifle. Well, I hope that maybe I'm hopefully just delirious then and nothing happens to me tonight because that would be super unfortunate for me. Oh, show some metal, Eugene. Yeah, I lost my metal God's in a shootout sake. with the police. I didn't even want to get into in the first place. So as he's like <laughs> talking and mumbling and stuff, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> if possible, I'd like to already be walking off, like carrying the rifle in sure. one hand. I'm just like, screw this guy. <laughs> he's still talking as you oh, leave. God, All right, you have a thirty out six bolt action rifle. Point thirty dash zero six bolt action. Okay, cool. All right, just to give you some quick stats for your little weapon section down there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it uses your firearms rifle skill, which I know is not the best one for you. True, but uh, the damage is two d six plus four. Okay, the range is a hundred and ten, and that is yards. Okay. Um, and then your attacks are one. Mm -hmm. And your ammo is five. And your malfunction is 100. Okay. Sounds good. All right. And so I think what we'll wrap up with is as the sun continues to set, you heading off in the northeasterly direction. Yes. Away from Eugene's hidey hole, as he likes to call it. Yeah, so next time I'll be setting up camp in the dark. Maybe. That is I true. No, that's... That's what makes sense. That is fair. Point. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Good thing I have a lantern. And a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hopefully you will have much excitement next time when we see how... Carl Fares in the dark, deep woods of mystery. Good night, everyone. We'll was, see you next time. Was Eugene delirious? Are there creepy people who can take bullets hanging out in the dark? We'll find out next time. <laughs>